praise God. The, the, tonight, the message that God gave me is uh, New Year's uh, resolutions. Okay? I was going to say revolutions. No, not yet. Okay, not yet. Uh, resolutions, okay? New Year's resolution. And I like to begin with a question, guys, okay? How many of you, and raise your hands, have made some New Year's resolutions for this year? Boy, oh boy, we got to talk. You guys have, n have not made any goals? Resolutions? Promises? <laughs> well, this message is for you. Okay, yeah. You walked into that one. I saw this guy back there. I know he's made goals and resolutions. Uh, me too. I have. Honestly. And we're going to talk about one, guys, that, that I pray, I pray. We sing these songs with our hearts. And, and I pray we, we live out these words. Many times we, we praise God with our lips, but our, but our lifestyle is different. We're going to talk about that tonight, okay? Whew. Now, there's something we need to, to come to terms with if we plan to commit to these resolutions or these goals. These intentions and goals are great. However, these resolutions require a little more than just wishing for these things to happen. They will take a different level of commitment that will allow us to break the old ways or the old habits, okay, that we're used to. Now, many people make New Year's resolutions. For example, some may want to change their diet. Okay, some want to eat healthier. Others want to be closer to family and friends. There are also those that want to make some changes in their finances. Praise the Lord. And saints, there are some who have made the promise or the resolution to have a closer relationship with God. Amen. Whew. Well, we know that this list can go on and on. Amen. These are wonderful promises, guys, or resolutions. However, there are several factors that we must consider when we want to make some of these changes, okay? Well, in our study today, we're going to, to read of how Jesus spoke to his disciples, he spoke to the Pharisees, and he spoke to the multitude that continued to follow him. And he spoke to them about being confined to a routine that kept them tied to some of the old customs and some of the old religious traditions. And from this, he continues to teach us that some of these things will always prevent us from reaching new goals or reaching our resolutions that we want to achieve, especially, saints, especially when we want to grow deeper in our relationship with Jesus Christ, okay? One of the main topics that Jesus talks about in this portion of Scripture is about how some of the religious traditions that continue to keep many in bondage, keep many in chains, okay? Now, saints, the resolutions we make can vary from one another. However, there's this principle that remains constant, okay? And we're going to see an example of this in this message there's a quote that is often repeated and, and can be applied to this lesson tonight. Okay, who's ever heard uh, this? What is the meaning of insanity? We all know it, right? What is the meaning of insanity? Of doing something over and over the same way and expecting a different result. Mm. The truth is that we want to see some changes in our lives. These desires or resolutions must always be followed by some kind of action. Okay. You know, I joined a gym, praise the Lord. It hasn't started, it hasn't opened up yet, so you don't see a difference yet. <laughs> I drive by a man with a donut in my hand. Yeah, I can't wait to get in there, you know. <laughs> Man. Guys, come on. You know, if you're used to eating 12 donuts a day and you say, I'm going to cut down to six. Good luck to you, okay? I'm just saying. Eventually, you go back to 12 again. I'm just saying. Sorry. For example, with me, I want to lose some weight, but it takes some kind of action. It's going to take some kind of motivation to, to get me to act. Not only dream, oh, I think I'll go by the gym today. No, don't go by the gym. Go in the gym, okay? I'm just saying. I drive by it every day, so, you know, does that count, Lord? No. No, no, no. Okay, another example, guys. If we want to get closer, the most closer to God, we must have some kind of action that demonstrates that desire. I've heard many, oh, I want to get closer to God. I want to get closer to God. But they're at home 
watching the tube. They're, hey, bro, I ain't seen you Sunday. What's going on? Oh, I want to get closer to God. There has to be some action behind this desire. Amen? If, if not, saints, let me tell you, nothing's going to happen. Nothing is going to change, okay? Now, with that, guys, please come with me to the book of Psalms, okay? And I want to share with you what David's heart says here in these verses. Psalm 63, verses 1 through 11, okay? And here we see a Psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah, okay? David was called a man after God's own heart. He was not a perfect man. We know that by scripture. But I tell you what, guys, he had a heart for God. And here we're going to see part of that in this psalm, okay? Psalm 63, 1 says, O God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches, because you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. But those who seek my life to destroy shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory, but the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Amen. Here we see behind these words, guys, we see words of action. You know, and, and David, obviously, being called the man after God's own heart, he demonstrated these words as well. Amen. Now, saints, of all the resolutions we can make in the beginning of this new year, the resolution that most captures my attention is the one we make to have a closer relationship with God. And that will be our main focus of this lesson tonight. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come to you with hungry hearts, surrendering everything, Lord, laying aside anything that would distract us from hearing your message, your word tonight. I pray, Lord, for the gift of teaching that these words that come from my mouth Come directly from your heart to penetrate, Lord. To penetrate those that, that are here tonight and those that are listening. That we, Father, that we would surrender completely to you. I thank you for this message, Father. May you be glorified tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Saints, as I mentioned before, I know that many of us have, some of us have made New Year's resolutions. And it took a bit of effort to keep them. You know, last year I wanted to lose weight again, and hey, here we go, and we ordered an elliptical, whatever. <clears throat> we got rid of it. it. Just It was in the way, I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> Became a very expensive, you know, clothes rack. I'm like, <sighs> so, so, you know what, here we go again, okay? So, so in, in, every time I pass by, hey, you're going to get on me today? Uh, hmm, what? Hmm, 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 no, I'm good. But guys, there's something we need to be aware of here. Some are usually than others, yes, we know, but there's something here in common. They all require for us to do something, some kind of action in order to change the results. They all require a determination to be successful. For example, let's take the desire to grow in our relationship with God. God's word is full of wisdom on how we can do this. But if you're not reading it, it's like I'm a gym membership. Oh, I got to look at LA Fitness, man. But you never go. Obviously, this is more extreme. Now, let's take a look at a key element mentioned in scriptures, guys. Please come with me to Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. Now, these are scriptures we all know. We, some of us know them by heart. 
But I'm going to show, we're going to see something here that is often overlooked, okay? Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. And this is what it says. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Then you will call on me and go and pray to me. And I will listen to you. Thank you, Mark, for following me on that. And you will seek me and you find me, it says, when you search for me with all your heart. Guys, there's a principle here. There's a, there's a constant here that is often overlooked. Sometimes we read these verses and we miss the real hidden treasures in them. In these verses, God tells us that he wants us to seek him. But he wants us to seek him with 75% of our heart. Does he say that? With 100%. With all of our hearts, guys. Well, for those of us who have made such a resolution to, to have a closer relationship with God, this verse is the key to the commitment we need to achieve this desire. Because if we don't have the desire to seek God, it's going to be very difficult. But here we also see a promise from God. He says, for those who seek me with all their hearts, they will find me. For those of you that are students of the word, you know this is true. God, I want to dive so deep that I got to put the scuba gear on. And one little verse will take me into three, four hours of, of just digesting the word of God. Whew. You guys know what I'm saying. The purpose, guys, honestly, the, the purpose of making resolutions is to change something in our lives. And in this case, to hopefully have a closer relationship with God. Well, with that, let's go to the book of Mark, guys. Our main text here. That brings us to our first point. In Mark 7, 1 through 5, please. And the first point here is the same old traditions. Allow me, guys, to paint a picture of what has taken place here, okay? Jesus has gone from city to city, healing people, doing all these miracles. And now there's a multitude of people following him. And in this process, he's teaching his disciples principles that they should follow. But we also see the Pharisees constantly challenging Jesus with not following their traditions. Okay, in Mark 7, 1 says, Then the Pharisees and some of the scribes came together to him, to Jesus, having come from Jerusalem. Now when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled that is, with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands in a special way, holding the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other things which they have received and hold, like washing of cups, pitchers, copper vessels, and couches. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? Amen. Saints, here we see religion in its truest form. Wow. We see Pharisees. We see these Pharisees in their attempt to get closer to God. In their attempt to become more holy, they continue to use rules, regulations, and tr traditions as chains to keep others prisoners of their man-made tradition. We see that today? Absolutely. And these guys, they don't have a clue that they themselves are prisoners of their own traditions. Now come with me to the book of 1 Samuel, please. 15.22 to see what it says here. 1 Samuel 15.22. The New Living Translation says this. But Samuel replied, What is more pleasing to the Lord? 
your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his word. Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice and submission is better than offering the fat of rams. I pray, saints, we take notice of what Jesus is teaching us in this passage. Because even in Christianity, we we can become religious in our attempts to grow closer to God. I've seen it, and it makes me sick. Why? Because I was there. I thought that once I read a little bit of the Word, ooh, ooh, I know more than you. I know more than you. Ooh. I've said this once, if not a thousand times. When we grow in this, what is radiant from others, what is radiant should be the grace of God, especially to the unbelievers. But here we see that in Christianity, guys, we can puff up. Now we begin to look with judgmental eyes, especially at the youth. Oh, did you see that hair? You see that tattoo? You see the piercings on that person? Yeah. Did you see her heart? Mm. That's what God wants us to see, guys. Because let me tell you something. When we stand before the mirror, speaking of me, I'm glad he sees my heart. Just saying. Please understand that even in Christianity, in our desire to grow in Christ, to grow in the grace of we should grow in his love, his mercy, his grace. And that should be evident for others to see. I'll give you a great example. Pastor Jim. You would never know he's the senior pastor if you saw him. We were working out here and I think I shared this last time. We go out there cutting the weeds and everything. And excuse me, landscapers. Yes. Can, can we talk to the senior pastor? It's right there. Oh, he's the senior pastor. Guys, our senior pastor is amazing. He's on the roof, man. I'm telling you what. He wears me out. I give up. I give up, sir. I'm just saying. I'll hold the water for you, okay? Hold the donut for you. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> One of the most common characteristics, guys, of religion is pride. Pride always elevates man instead of God. Always. And these Pharisees were a good example of that. Pride will cause you, listen to this, pride will cause you to focus on trying to impress others while working to earn God's favor. Do you hear that? To impress others while you're working to earn God's favor. That's religion. Those People come and knock on the door. That's what they're trying to do. To earn God's favor. Instead, guys, instead of trusting God to do a work in you and through you. This is the song. Give me faith to trust in what you say. Now, let's, let's see how Jesus responds to these Pharisees' accusations, okay? Let's see in Mark 7, 6 through 13. That brings us to our second point. Point number two, drifting further and further away from God. Mark 7, 6 says, And he answered and said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men. The washing of pitchers and cups and many other such things you do, Jesus says. And he said to them, all too well you reject the command of God that you may keep your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother. And he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me is Corban. That is a gift to God. Then you no longer let him do anything for his father or his mother. Guys, verse 13. Making the word of God of no effect 
through your tradition which you have handed down. And many such things you do. And another translation of verse 13. And so you cancel the word of God. In order to hand down your own tradition. Wow. And this, the example one among many others, he said, ouch. So when Jesus defended his disciples, he exposed their hypocrisy. In their attempt to defend their traditions, these Pharisees eroded their own character in this attempt to elevate their traditions above the word of God. Jesus was trying to teach them that true worship must come from the heart and must be directed by God's truth. Not, not man's personal opinions, not his ideas, or, or even his traditions. These religious leaders could not see their own tragedy. That they ignorantly practicing their man-made traditions, instead of getting closer to God, they were, their hearts were now further away from God. And unfortunately, saints, let me tell you, this tragedy still continues today. Allow me to ask these questions. I love questions. Saints, have you put anything above God? Don't be quick to answer. Have you put anything above God? Could it be your work, career, family, traditions, your friends, your children, your wife? Husband, ministry, Facebook, social media. I can see somebody stir on that one. What have you placed above God? And let me tell you guys something. Let me you. Where you spend most of your time. I'm not talking about work. I understand that. Where you spend most of your time. That's where you're. That's where your devotion is. Do you find yourself drifting further and further away from God? Where you were once on fire for God. I cannot get enough of you, Lord. I want more. You're going to every Bible study that is there. You're volunteering here and there. You're on fire for God. But now, you seek your fulfillment somewhere else. That ain't going to fly this year, brothers and sisters. That is not going to fly. We'll get to that. Allow me to share this from my heart. In this new year, brothers and sisters, it is not a time to be wandering. Further and further away from God. No way. Well, that brings us to our next point. And this next point will expose some of these reasons that we may have. Number three, the contamination of man. Mark 7, 14 through 16. The contamination of man. In Mark 7, 14, he says, When he called them all the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear me, everyone, and understand. There is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile a man. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. After talking to the religious leaders, calling them on the carpet, exposing their hypocrisy, he now turns to the multitude, listen to me. There is nothing from the outside that can defile a man. The defilement comes from within. Whew. Please pay close attention to what Jesus is saying. Because here, saints, here's the difference between living a victorious life in Christ or living as a victim in your life. I've seen too many Christians walking around as victims. What is that all about? Doesn't he say that we're more than conquerors? That we can do all things in Christ? 
But yeah, man, you don't understand my situation. I don't need to understand. I know God. And God can, God can take that if you surrender it. Guys, this is the, the, between living a victorious life in Christ and, and living as a, as a victim. For example, if you gave me a dollar for every time somebody came to me and said, Oh, Pastor, pray for me. Satan's on me, man. He's attacking me, man. Or, or the devil made me do it. It's the devil, man, that's keeping me away from, from, from church. It's the devil that's keeping me from being obedient to God. Boy, if you gave me a dollar for every time I heard that, I'd be a rich man. Let me share with you guys something here. The fact is, saints, it's not Satan who prevents us from being obedient to God. This comes from the depths of our hearts. Let's take a look what James has to say. Please come with me to the book of James. James 1, 14 through 15. We, we keep giving Satan credit, blaming him, okay? Guys, Satan's defeated. When we come to terms with that, okay, now we're left with ourselves. Okay, James chapter 1, verse 14 says, Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. Hello? I don't see Satan mentioned here. Temptation comes from our own desires. And we'll get to that in a minute here. These desires, he said in 15, give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, hello, it gives birth to what? To death. Oh, Satan's on me. No, he's not. Take a look in the mirror. That's who's on you. It's true, guys, it's true that the moment Adam sinned, he turned over his authority, his dominion to Satan. It's true. But from, from that moment on, we all, we all have been contaminated with a seed of sin and death. Amen. And that seed, that curse, guys, is what we now struggle with and will struggle with for the rest of our lives. But just because it's there doesn't mean we have to bow the knee yeah. guys when this dog wants to eat you need to starve him because the moment you let him out of the pen and he wants to play what's he say here when sin is allowed to grow it gives birth to death That, saints, is what's contaminated us. And this is what Jesus exhorts us to understand. A very important point we should understand here, saints, is when we get, want to get closer to God, we must identify the enemy that will try to prevent us from achieving this goal. And saints, let me tell you the truth. For the most part, this enemy is ourselves. This stinking flesh. People don't understand it. What do you mean? What do you mean, Pastor? Go look in the mirror. That's your enemy. Well, I've been saved. I've been born again. We're still living in this tent, though. And that guy wants to play sometimes. And the moment you let him out, let me tell you something. It's hard to put him back in. It is hard to put him. I know. So with these resolutions that we have made, saints, we must also have a plan of action to achieve them. You ever gone hunting? How many hunters in the room? What are you hunting for? Sis? Wow, praise God. I hate to go. With, I don't understand. Guys, you're going to go hunting. What are you going hunting for? I don't know. I'm just going. got my shotgun. I'm, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? When we don't have a plan, that's how it is to go hunting. What are you going hunting for, brother? I don't know. You got a bow and arrow. What, what are you aiming at? I don't know. That's how it is not to have a plan. When you have a target, now it is, there it is. That's a plan. That's a plan, okay? Now let's continue in Mark. That brings us to our fourth point. The darkness of the heart. Mark 7, 17 to 23. The darkness of the heart. 
Mark 7, 17 says, When he had entered a house away from the crowd, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. So he said to them, Are you thus without understanding also? Do you not perceive what, what, that whatever enters a man's, uh, from a man outside cannot defile him? Because it does not enter into his heart, but his stomach, and is eliminated, thus purifying all foods. 20, verse 20, and he said, what comes out of a man, that defiles a man. Understand, guys, these are the men that were with him. And praise God, I love, you know, I'm not putting them down. But they had a hard time understanding. And praise God, he, God was faithful, patient with them. Now, verse 21, let's take a look. Pay attention to what is in the heart of a man. He says here, for from, from within... Out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, and an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Thank you, Lord, for stopping there. Guys, and I say this, without Jesus Christ, I am nothing. I am dumb. Because I know there is nothing good in me. Amen. Well, allow me to ask some more questions. Okay. And he says, verse 23, all these evil things come from within and defile a man. Let me, let me pause here and ask you a question, guys. Do you have a plan of action to be victorious over this stinking flesh on a daily basis? Are you being discipled? I don't know what that means. Are you being taught as Jesus taught his disciples? Are you discipling others? I often say, do you have a Timothy in your life that you're pouring into him? And do you have a Paul in your life, someone pouring into you? Let me tell you why people don't like discipling. Because they don't want to be held accountable to each other. You know why? Because if I'm going to mentor this person, I better be on the straight and narrow. Because I'm going to tell him to imitate me as I imitate Christ. I've been mentoring men for 10 years plus. And, and the comments that I get, guys, let me tell you, it ain't from the men. It's from the wives. Pastor, Pastor, I want to thank you. My husband is a new man. It's not me, sis. It's all Jesus Christ. Because in this process, we're growing together. Amen. Brothers, sisters, if you've never been disciple, we need to chat. I'd love to talk to you. Because if you're not being discipled, you're just going through the motions. These men that Jesus discipled, yeah, they didn't understand. But after the filling of the Holy Spirit, Peter was bold. Because he understood these principles now that Jesus was teaching him. Please come and see me afterwards, please. Okay, please. Let me ramp it up here. What this world needs, guys, let me tell you. It's not a new government. What they need is for men and women of God to stand up. Because I know, I mean, I'm tired of this bull. I'm not, Lord, are you coming today, please? I guess not. Time to go to work. Do you have a plan? Do you have a plan? Wow. When you sign up for a gym, you got a plan. They make sure you got a plan. Okay, we're going to do this. This is Okay, do you have a plan to grow closer to God? If not, let me, you're going through the motions. Now, also these that are viewing this message, let me be honest with you guys. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is the reason why we all need to be born again. Okay. 
We need to be born from the inside out. Since the fall of Adam in the beginning, the human race has been contaminated, has been cursed with the seed of sin and death. And the only one who can free us from it or redeem us from it is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Guys, without Christ as our Savior, our Redeemer, we are still dead in our sins. Wow. Now, please come into the book of Ephesians. Let's see what Paul has to say about the darkness of the heart. Okay? Ephesians 5, 8 through 14. And pay, pay close attention to what Paul says here. He's talking to the church in Ephesus here. Verse 8 says, For you were once darkness. I'm going to pause there for just a second. Guys, take your finger and go like this. For we were once darkness. He didn't say we were once in darkness, part of darkness. No, no, we were darkness. Okay. But now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Holy Spirit is, all, is in all is goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And he says there, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. There's too many Christians playing on the fence, guys. I played on the fence for years. One foot in the church, one foot in the world. Thinking, you okay, today I'm pleasing God to, well, not today, but... Until God told me, you know what? You make me sick. You call yourself a Christian. But your lifestyle doesn't reflect that. And you make me sick. I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. God, that woke me up. Big time. Woke me up. Let's continue, okay? And here it says, And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. By, li by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, Awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead. And Christ will give you light. Church, wake up. Church, wake up. Well, this selection was rigged. Yeah. Guys, come on. We can fall into that trap. God has a plan. Do we trust that? Do we trust the plan? We don't have to understand it, but do we trust it? Everything that's going on. Come on, read your word. It's getting closer and closer and closer to his return. I pray that it doesn't get worse. Because that means his return is even closer. But in that, are you ready? Are you ready? Now, please come with me to the book of John, chapter 3, verse 19 through 21. John 3, 19 through 21. And he says here, John, and this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light. Lest his deeds should be exposed. You know why people stop coming to church? Because man, when the pastor speaks, they think he's speaking right to them. God is speaking to them. Amen. They're like, oh, I didn't like that. You know, I don't know, man. I'm going to go find me another church. One to pat me on the back, you know, tell me that my sin's okay. Hey, there's a lot of churches like that. These woke churches around there, you guys know what I'm saying. I often get comments, wow, Pastor Jim, I tell you what, I'm going to have to start wearing my steel toe boots. I say, yeah, me too. But he shoots it straight. We all try to shoot it straight. Because you don't need sugar on it, guys. Come on. You don't need it watered down. Read it from the Word of God. That's how we need it. Amen? He says, but he who does the truth comes to the light. That his deeds may be clearly seen. That they have been done in God. Whew. You know, as the music team comes up. 
Saints, in this lesson today, we've talked about some New Year's resolution that some of us have made. And I pray that one of them will be for all of us to grow closer to God. I pray that we make this commitment not only with our words, with our lips, but we make this commitment with our hearts. And also in this lesson, Jesus shows us of some of the key areas that we must be aware of that will prevent us from growing in our relationship with God. These religious leaders were examples of what happens when you elevate religion, traditions, or anything else above the word of God. Saints, God requires of us obedience instead of sacrifice. It's not, it's not negotiable. He requires us to be obedient. And to love him with all of our hearts more than just our words. In the book of James, he tells us that when we draw near to God, God draws near to us. I don't know about you guys, okay? But I want God close to me. Someone once told me or they tell me, does, does God hear you? Does God speak to you? Absolutely. What does he sound like? This is what he sounds like. But when you flip these pages, oh, talk to me, Lord. Talk to me. Praise the Lord. Well, let me end with some questions in our study, okay? Do you have a desire, saints, to grow closer with God? How does that look? Someone comes to you, sis, do you have a desire to grow closer with God? Ah, me too. But what are you doing about it? Ah, let me tell you what I'm doing. Be intentional, guys. Be intentional. Quit shooting at the, oh, I think, I hope I hit it. <laughs> Be intentional. Guys, this past year, 222, 2022, was a very challenging year for everyone. And this new year will likely bring more of the same, possibly worse. We as a church will continue to come under attack more and more. Hmm. And if we're not prepared, if we do not have a plan, and if we are not totally committed to Jesus Christ, there are some that will become casualties of this war. I pray we will all commit to drawing closer to God and be blessed, be blessed with opportunities to minister to others the gospel. When I mentor men, I say, you know how God blesses his children the most? Well, spiritual gifts, yeah. Yeah, that's part of it. But you know how? He puts people in front of you. Out of nowhere, people will come to you if you're faithful and obedient. Come to you, can you? Uh, I just came out of Mormonism, man. Can you, can you tell me about Jesus? I want that. I, you know what? I'm not selfish, but I want that. Because you know what? This, this is not just a hobby. This is not a weekend thing that I do. This is my lifestyle. And without that, I'm lost. I know it. I pray, guys. I pray we do commit to God. I pray that we would listen to what God is sharing with us through his word. And that we would be faithful and obedient to his spirit. What's he say? He who has an ear. Let him hear what the spirit of God is saying. Whew. Guys, as this worship team is going to play this song. We're going to partake of the elements. To celebrate what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us. Not only for us, but for all of humanity. There's two cups. If you're new here, there's two cups. Please take both of them. And please partake when you return back to your seat. And Please meditate on these words as you're partaking. Talking about his body. This cup of bread represents the body of Jesus Christ. The body that was brutally beaten for the sins of the world. And Jesus says, I am the bread of life. 
He who comes to me will never hunger again. He who believes in me will never thirst. And he says, this is the bread that came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate manna and died. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Mm. This is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he talks about the blood. This cup that you're going to partake of juice represents the precious blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross for all of humanity. He says in Romans 5, 8 through 9, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sick. Can you imagine that? God didn't wait to cl- for us to clean up our act. He knew we couldn't. For those watching, don't wait for the right moment. Today is the right moment. Well, I'm not ready. You better get ready. I'm just saying. And he says this. Then since we have been made righteousness in the sight of God by the blood of Christ, he will surely save us from God's condemnation. That, saints, why we celebrate. We celebrate what God did for us by sending his only son to die for humanity. And we sometimes have the audacity. To treat this like it's just another paperback novel. The word of God is alive and it's powerful. And when you have the chance to witness to somebody, pour into them the word of God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this new year. Prepare us, equip us for what you have in store for us. I pray, my King, we would take a stand like never before. That we would take a stand for your word, for our faith, my God. But help us, Lord, understand that this victory is already yours. It's ours. In this process, Lord, we know that you're preparing a harvest. And I pray, my King, we would keep our eyes focused on you as these people come out of this madness, seeking hope, seeking true love. I pray, my King, as we make these commitments this new year, That we would be intentional in setting a plan. Be intentional, Father, of this action that requires us to accomplish growing in this relationship with you. Thank you, Father. Lord, we love you. We pray, my King, for more of your wisdom, more of your mercy, more of your love. That we, Father, can radiate this to others. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our midst. Thank you for what you're going to do in this new year. Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Guys, happy new year. God bless you. And may God help us with our new year's resolutions. If you need prayer, please come up afterwards. And we'd love to pray with you. We'd love to tell you about Jesus. Okay. Uh, If you have questions about discipling process, please come and see me. Amen. God bless you. And thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Thank you. Thank you.